Hello, smart students. Welcome to this week's short all the way from California with my new California mug and also an excessive heat wave. I don't know if you guys can relate, but I feel like most of you can right now. So comment down below if where you live right now you are in extreme heat because I feel you. But anyways, the purpose for today's short is I wanna talk about block quotes, not direct quotes. If you need help with direct quotes, check out this video here. But I wanna talk about block quotes because while they're very similar to a direct quote in that you're directly quoting some other author's words in your paper, a block quote is when you're using more than 40 words. Because when you're using more than 40 words, this requires a significantly different formatting structure under APA 7th edition, hence why I'm making this video for you. So, other things you need to keep in mind when it comes to formatting a block quote is that it should begin on its own line, indented inward one half inch. You don't wanna put any of it in quote You know what? While me explaining this, is nice, it's probably not that helpful. How about I do this alongside a real example? Come with me. All right, so here's our first example and I wanna show you a parenthetical block quote first. And now I'm gonna take the most time with this first one so I can go over all the different formatting principles of a block quote. So like I already said, a block quote is the same thing as a direct quote in that you are using the exact words an author used in their work in your own writing, except a block quote must be 40 words or more. So if you're ever curious, you can use the tool feature in either Google Docs or Microsoft Word to see what your word count is. And as you can see here, we have 57 words here, so we're good. This is definitely a block quote. Now, the first and probably one of the biggest things that sets the formatting apart from a direct quote is that the block quote fully needs to be indented inward one half inch. So if you notice, I highlighted the entire block quote and then the easiest way to bring this inward is to use the ruler icon up here, go ahead and select the bottom carrot and pull it all the way in. And as you can see, it's now indented one half inch. Next, the thing I want to point out is if you'll notice, there are no double quotations around this quote. So with a block quote, you will not use quotation marks to signify the quote unless there is a direct quote within the block quote, which is kind of confusing, so don't worry about that. I'm going to show you an example of what I mean later. But the next thing I want to point out is the parenthetical in-text citation for this block quote. So as you can see, it's very similar to a parenthetical direct quote citation in that you have the author element followed by the year of publication and then the source locator last. The one thing I wanna point out here that's different is please note how the punctuation is not after the parenthetical in-text citation but after the last sentence in the block quote. The reason being is that since a block quote is essentially a paragraph's length, you're going to include the punctuation as normal and leave the in-text citation as is without a punctuation after it. Also, if you'll notice, there's this introductory sentence to the actual block quote. All block quotes will have this, whether it's a narrative or a parenthetical block quote formatting. You'll want to make sure to include a colon leading into the block quote like you see it is here. Now, one more thing that I would like to point out with a block quote is let's say this block quote spans more than one paragraph. Well, what you would do is everything's going to be indented inward one half inch like you see it is here. However, let's say this highlighted portion is a second paragraph. What you're going to do is hit enter one time and then the tab key one time as well so that the paragraph is indented in another half inch, signifying that there's a second paragraph in this block quote. I'm gonna say that that's definitely the less common scenario, but in case you run into it, that's how you would format it. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next example, which is how to format a block quote for a narrative in-text citation. So this block quote is already formatted and I kinda just wanna point out the different elements. So for a narrative block quote, the author element is worked into the narration of the sentence structure. So as you can see here, you have Flores, 2018, described how they address potential research bias and so on and so forth. 
and then afterwards the actual block quote is included just like you saw before where the entire block quote is an indented inward one half inch and then if you'll note the source locator is included at the end of the block quote like you see it is here and again i want to point out that the punctuation does not follow the source locator but follows the last sentence in the block quote not too bad right let's go ahead and move on to the final example in this example, I simply wanted to show you what I meant by if the block quote contains a direct quote within it. So in other words, as you can see, this sentence right here is a direct quote and that requires double quotations around it. However, the block quote itself is not a full direct quote and should not contain quotations, contain quotations, contain quotations around the entire block quote, like I said before. So this is another example of a parenthetical block quote. As you can see, the three elements are included at the end, enclosed in parentheses. Everything else remains the same. The entire paragraph is indented inward one half inch. You have the introducing sentence here first, followed by a colon, and everything in the block quote is double spaced just like the rest of your paper. All right, well, I hope you found that example useful, helpful, whatever you want to call it, just hopefully not a waste of your time because you actually learned something. And also, I hope that wherever you're at in the world that you stay cool this summer, you're having a good time. Again, comment down below. I love interacting with my smart student community. Speaking of community, if you haven't joined the smart student Facebook group community yet, please go do so. It's a great place to ask questions and get really good, quick responses from other fellow students and myself. But anyways, guys, have a wonderful day. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe for more videos like this every week. Thank you.